Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and I have a C-Class 2.1 diesel here. We're going to do a service B on it, which is an oil change and a cabin filter change. So if we get in the vehicle here, we have this message service B5 is overdue by 16 days. So we'll start the car up. This is going to be the first thing we do. And we'll get the temperature up. Operate the temperature of the engine, which is down here. the accelerator for about a minute or two just to get the temperature up a little bit so we've now left the car idle for a few minutes and the temperature has come up so what these Mercedes B service you need to check on each individual model really but normally uh, service A means you need uh, basically a full service oil air fuel and a B service typically means that you need uh, an oil change and a cabin filter but um, yeah you can check your booklets for to see what is needed on your specific model so if you look on the previous service history you can see that this car has already had the cabin filter replaced add blue battery engine oil and the brake fluid replaced so we're not going to do none of that today maybe the cabin filter will have a look at it uh, but we're not going to change the brake fluid or oh, we're not going to change any of these bits just the oil change basically today so now we can switch the engine off and just under here we have the red bonnet catch. So on the front of the plastic engine cover we have a flat screw there, we just turn it. So once we've loosened up that we can lift up the front of the engine cover and then pull it forward which will pull it out of those rear grommets there. So the first thing you can do with any oil service is loosen the oil cap and pull up the dipstick just to let the air flow. Now I've got this set here, it's a laser 3222. It's an oil filter wrench set so I've got the correct size here for this car and the oil filter is just over here and that cup will sit directly on it. Now on this oil change I'm not going to jack the car up and open this up, I'm going to use this oil extractor. Um, and I know a lot of people will moan about that, but this is a, another method that you can use and it is exactly how most dealerships would do it these days. They'll put an extraction pipe into the dipstick and suck the oil out from there. So I'm going to open the oil filter now. And once that's loose enough, we can take off the ratchet and just give the last couple of twists by hand. Now once we've got that loose, I'm just going to let that sit there for a minute because we will get a lot of drippage. But if we let that sit there for a couple of minutes, most of the oil is going to drain back down. Now I'm going to use one of the tubes from the extraction pump. Remove the oil dipstick and insert the vacuum tube in there now we just connect up the vacuum pump to this tube here we just need to push those together just like that now they're all pushed together tightly now it's just a case of pumping up the vacuum pump now it's been flowing for a few minutes so you can see we've got one two and about 2.5 liters in there so far hold the torch to it you can see that but on this particular car it should have about six liters but when I did tried the dipstick before it was on the minimum level so we're gonna have less than six liters come out of this so far we've got about five and a half liters there so this takes six six will be here and 6.5 liters so each each one of these is a liter one two three four five six well, our extraction pump here is actually full now. We've got 6.5 litres in there. So there we are finished, just jumping around there. We can see it's taken almost 7 litres, this. Now what I can do is put a cloth just around here, just in case we get any spillage. Just uh, You can clean it up, of course, but if you just put a little cloth there, it just helps you make less of a mess. But I am hoping not to really get any sort of drips now. We've left that there for a fair few minutes. Sulking its way out. 
yeah and we haven't got any sort of drips there you can see so now i'm just going to pull out the old filter cartridge here pull it out of the center and when this out we can put the old filter back in the in the uh, container there or the cardboard box and this uh, new filter came in that's a blueprint filter there and that's the part numbers that came for it but obviously just check your own part numbers just in case they're different so we've got some new seals here one two three and they go here one two and three now you can use a little pick like this just to pull off these um, seals and then once you've got a pick under it you can just pull it out with your fingers and then the same goes for the other ones as well you just pop them up with the little pick there and then you can pull them out and we'll dump those in there so once the seals are on one two and three there you just put the new filter cartridge slide it straight in now I've got oily fingers there with these gloves so what I'm doing is just rubbing all the way around the rubber seals just to get them nice and oily so they're not dry and they're not gonna they're not gonna pinch up once you slide them in these rods always lube up your rod before you shove it in and once all your rods are lubed up nicely there you should be able to slide it in without doing any damage Of course it's best not to do any damage to your seals when you're sliding the rod in but uh, you'll always want to come back in here next time if not it's good nice to keep it in good condition for the next mile the Mercedes are helpful there by putting the newton meters on the cap 25 newton meters now I'm gonna use this it's an oil filter that just locks into the actual engine block there you turn it in this is from work Zuig. well it's work Zuig and you just twist it and it'll lock into place there so that's where you get that from wellsworkzug.com so then you just make sure that the funnel is nice and clean and we can fill our six liters of oil back in there this is 5w30 oil i think a c3 grade it was but wherever you're buying your oil from will give you the correct grade of oil that you need for your car and the good thing about this funnel is you can pour in the oil as fast as you like so you can see there it's filling up the funnel and it doesn't leak out what an ordinary funnel um, like the one I've got over here you can get a lot of spillage if you're not careful so that's where this one comes in handy you can just pour the oil in as fast as you like and it will make its way down there it just seals it all up at the bottom So that was five liters in now we've got another liter here and we'll get some of this in now we just clean up the dipstick with a clean rag and we let that oil sit for about a minute or so before we check the dipstick and we get the dipstick in there push it all the way down now usually when you pull these out it's quite difficult to see the oil because it's brand new golden oil so we can see there that we're just about right on the level but what we're going to do is we'll run the engine for a minute and then the oil will blacken up which will give you a much clearer view so we just remove our funnel here and that's how that works there you can see at the bottom it just locks into place so we'll come back inside the car start it up let that oil go through the filter We'll just give it a couple of revs for a minute just let that oil circulate now if we cut back out and we recheck the oil the oil should be sort of black again so while we're in here now we'll we've ran the engine for a minute there so we'll turn the ignition on to number one then we're going to hold the uh, call button and the OK button at the same time. Now once I've held those for a few seconds you'll get up this vehicle data menu so we're going to scroll down now 
to the assist plus. And then we need to switch the ignition on. Press OK again there. Go to the service data. Now you'll see with this car, like I said, it had the service items already changed not so long ago. The problem with that is the car hasn't really done any mileage since last year. It's, it's probably done like a thousand miles or so. So it's overdue on the days, not on the mileage. You can see it's got 23,000 miles left, but it's overdue by 16 days in the time. So press back, we'll go into the service. We'll go all the way down on these buttons again. I'm gonna confirm a service. I'm gonna select that oil grade because I'm not sure what all that oil grade is. Don't know which one it is. I don't know why it's asked that, but yes, we'll press OK. Service is now complete. Turn the ignition off. Now let's start it up and hopefully that service B is gone. Yep. So again there, we've left it idle. Um, we've left it just settle for about a minute. We've cleaned the dipstick. Now we'll insert it back in. Let it sit for a couple of seconds and then pull it back out and we'll check the oil level. And we can see now that the oil is black and it's exactly on where it should be there with six litres. So you can see there by using this extraction pump, um, I know a lot of people don't like it, but I've done separate videos where I've changed the oil with one of these and changed it without it and there was no difference in the amount of oil that came out. So you can see there that I haven't done any sort of cleaning, it hasn't made any any mess around the oil filter, it hasn't made any mess around the engine, it hasn't made any mess underneath the car. We haven't broken any bolts on the plastic under trays. We haven't damaged the sump plug, which all these things can happen when you jack the car up. Um, and especially that we are on gravel, which is not nice to work on. So it's a very simple way of doing your service on a Mercedes. You know, the filter's at the top, it's not underneath. Everything is located on the top of the engine, which is nice and easy. So that's it. Basically, we are all finished now on this uh, oil service. So just over here now, we have the blueprint cabin filter. This has been a UK vehicle. It's right-hand drive. So we're going to come in the passenger side here, remove the floor mat, and then come underneath here. We have a couple of T20 Torx bolts just there. And on the other side. Or well on this one there is only just a one screw in it so we'll undo that pull that down twist that little light there to the side or sensor well sorry and when you should be able to now just pull that down a bit more maybe we've got something else around the back here that wire there was just catching on that hook so move that out of the way and then we should be able to just pull this tray out now if we come back under, there's the cabin filter right there. Let's just slide it to one side. Just like that. And pull it down. Got a bit of the floor mat so that they're catching it. Pull it to the right and out with the cover. And then out with the cabin filter. So this car has it only done it's like done at not even a thousand miles since since last year, so I'm expecting it to be in pretty good condition, which it is. It's almost brand new. Uh, you can't really judge the colour of this because the colour doesn't mean anything. Some of these are uh, carbon filters, which they're already black when you get them brand new. You can see that it's in generally brand new condition. There's no dust whatsoever in it. Now, guess what? We've just opened the filter that we've got here. And it's a completely different shape. It's wrong. So for now we're just going to put that filter back in. So that's it. We are all finished. We just put the engine cover back on and we are all done. See you in our next video.